The Lord opened my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. The word of the Lord came to Abram. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. Promises. 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 They're spoken over and over again, and then quickly broken. We hear promises spoken at school and at work, and they're broken. We hear promises spoken in marriage and in families, and then broken. And we hear the politicians speak their promises, and they break them, breaking their words, broken words, broken promises. Almost to the point is that's what we expect. We expect people to break their promises. We expect people to break their word, but not today, not here, because of the one who makes the promises. It's the Lord God himself. He makes his promises to you, and the Lord keeps all of his promises, every one of them. He keeps his promises to you. He is the promise keeper, and we are the receivers of God's promise, and your very life depends upon it. Your life depends upon God keeping His promise for every breath you take, for every heart that beats. He knows your very lifespan. The oxygen in the air is provided by God's word of promise. The dirt under our feet is provided by God's word of promise. Abram is the receiver of God's promises. Abram is to believe and trust in God's promises. And so too with you. You are the receiver of God's promises. You're to believe them. You're to trust them with everything that you have. God's promise to Abram were about children. Having children, but most specifically about the coming Savior, Jesus Christ. God made the promise to him about the coming Savior. Promises made, God keeps them. Christmas. God fulfills the promise. Jesus is born. Jesus comes down out of heaven, down to earth, is born of the Virgin Mary in flesh and blood to save his people from their sins. Promises made, promises kept. And then Jesus preaches his word of promise. He preaches his word of promise over and over again. And the heart and the core of Jesus' promise to you I've come to die for you. I've come to stand in your place, the place of sinners. I will rise from the grave. He makes those promises to you. Promises made, promises kept. Good Friday and Easter, Jesus has done all the saving work for you by his death <clears throat> and his resurrection. Abraham is known as the father of the faith. He trusts God's promises. <clears throat> And God gives them to Abraham over and over again. But when it comes to preaching, preaching is not about Abraham. We don't preach Abraham, but we preach Christ and Him crucified for you. So Abraham hears the word of the Lord. And before, when we look at Abraham, we see him as a pagan, a rank unbeliever. Before the word of the Lord came to him, he was outside of God. But when the word of the Lord came to him, God called him into the church. God called him out of darkness into his marvelous light. To hear and believe the promises of God. And then what did God do with Abraham? He spoke those promises over and over again. And what did Abraham do with all these promises God put into his ears? He struggled. He wrestled. And he fought. He fell back into old ways. He fell back into old habits. And his old habits were his reason, his logic. And he fought against God's promises. God made a promise to Abraham about having children, many children. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth. So as one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring also will be counted. Abraham hears those promises, and he goes back to his reason and his logic. He reasons and he logics through the process, and he says, I'm an old man. I'm getting close to the nursing home. How in the world will I be a father? He looks at his wife, Sarah, 
and she's old. Not quite as old as him, but she's getting pretty close to the nursing home as well. She has given me no children. How in the world will we have children at this old age? So he struggles with God's promises. And Sarah, she comes up with a solution. The solution she provides is Hagar. Hagar's younger. Hagar's stronger. She'll give you children. So she gives her husband to Hagar. And they have a child. But this is sin. This is not what the Lord had promised. He did not promise a Savior to Abram and Hagar. But the promise of a Savior was through wedded marriage. Between Abraham and his wife Sarah. So Abraham calls out, O Lord God, what will you give me? I continue childless. An heir of my house will be Eliezer of Damascus. Behold, you have given me no offspring. No offspring. So he wrestles. He returns back to what God has said and what the Lord has spoken. And God's promises come back into Abram's ears. Filling him with confidence in what the Lord will do. And what the Lord does for you. I am your shield. I am your very great reward. This man, Eliezer, will not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. He brought Abram outside and stood, looked to the heavens. Number the stars, if indeed you can count them. So tonight, take a look at the stars in the sky. Do a project. See if you can count those stars. So are the descendants of Abraham that numerous. Descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. God says, you see those stars up there? I hung them. I put them in their place. I laid the foundation of the earth on which you stand. I dug the trenches in which the seas lie. And I gave them their boundaries. And I do it all by my word. My word of promise. The very creation you live in is sustained by the Word of God. And the creation is good. It is a wonderful place to live, but the creation is not to be worshipped. We worship the Creator, God Himself, who gives us this place to live. So this Word of God comes to you. The Word of the Lord came to Abram. The Word of the Lord comes to you. And once you are a pagan, once you are a rank unbeliever, you are outside the Lord's church. And God's word came to you and called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. To live in the church. To hear God's word. And God speaks his word to you. Week after week. Month after month. Year after year. And what do we do with the promises that God has spoken to us? We struggle. We wrestle. We fight. And sometimes we're just downright rebellious about what the Lord has spoken to us. We fight and we wrestle. Speaking for myself, I have broken words. I have broken my promises. My words do not always do what I say. What to do in the midst of my sin, your sin, our sin? Come on back. Return to the Lord your God. Return to the one who keeps his promises and he keeps them to you. Jesus is the promise keeper. And he goes to Calvary's cross to prove it. To take away all of our broken words. To take away all of our law breaking. Jesus takes it into his body. His body is broken and his blood is shed. And it's shed for you. To forgive your sins. 2 Corinthians 5. For your sake, God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for you, so that in Jesus, you would become the righteousness of God. Those are promises. Promises kept by God for you. And in 1 Corinthians 15, that Christ died for your sins, according to the scriptures. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. Promises made, promises kept, fulfilled by Jesus Christ for you. Jesus is your shield. He's your shield against all of your sin. Jesus is your shield against the wrath of God. 
Jesus took the wrath of God on Good Friday's tree. Jesus is your shield from your broken words. Because Jesus keeps all of his words for you to trust and believe. By his death and resurrection, you have life everlasting by faith in Christ. When you look at Abram, you see a sinner. Abram is a sinner and he's a saint all at the same time. Simul. He is righteous by faith in Christ. He's a holy man. As we hear in verse 6, Abram believed the Lord and God counted to him as righteousness. To be righteous means to be holy. And it comes to you by faith. You too are holy. You are the holy people of God. The holy and Christian and apostolic church which God calls to himself. And Jesus comes to you week after week. The word of the Lord comes to you. And the risen Lord Jesus Christ puts his promises in your ears. He puts them into your heart. And the promises that Jesus speaks to you is, your sins are forgiven. I have bled and died in your place. You are going to live. I have taken away your death. The risen Lord Jesus Christ comes to you in the fault. Through his water and through his word. And he has promises he washes over your body. And he fills you with the Holy Spirit. The promises in baptism? Mark 16. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Promises. And the risen Lord Jesus Christ comes to you today. He gives promises to you and he puts them into your mouth. To eat and to drink his body, his blood. For the forgiveness of all your sins. These promises sustain you to life everlasting. For Jesus comes for sinners. Sinners like Abraham, like Isaac, like Jacob, like Noah, and like you. Jesus comes to save. You see, you're in the family. You're in the family of God. Not by family tree. Not by genealogy. Not by your works, not by your efforts. How are you in the family? By faith. By faith in Jesus Christ. Galatians 3. Those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Or as Jesus says in John chapter 8 of Abraham, Abraham rejoiced in seeing Jesus' day. He saw it and was glad. Those who claim the God of Abraham can only do so through Jesus Christ. If they do not believe in Jesus, they have a different God, a false one. But you're in the family, and the Lord has called you into his family, and he fills you up with his promises, and his promises continue to come to you and give you peace and bring you life. As Paul proclaims to the church at Corinth, for all the promises of God find their yes in Jesus. That is why through Jesus we utter our amen. To God alone be the glory. It is God who establishes you in Christ. He has anointed you, and he's also put his seal in you. He's given you his Holy Spirit. Gifts. Amens. They reign because of what Jesus Christ has done, fulfilling his promise. In the midst of this, you want to follow Abraham as an example? We can do so. Because he's a sinner. He's a sinner like us who has his sins forgiven and he believes in Jesus. As we already sang in our hymn, O little flock, fear not. As true as God's own word is true, nor earth, nor hell's satanic crew against us shall prevail. Their might a joke, a mere facade. God is with us and we with God. Our victory cannot fail. Thanks be to God for his promises given to you through Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen. Rejoice our Lord's gifts, rejoicing in his promises fulfilled in Christ. We as God's people pray because he promises to heal. We stand for the prayers of the church.